Okay, so I'm going to show you how I set up for a basic drive-in worship service. Uh, this is mainly for in case I'm not here so that you can uh, set things up and know where all the plugs are going to go and everything like that. Uh, if I'm not here, chances are you're, it's going to be a bit simplified. Uh, you won't be doing laptop. You won't be doing recording, probably, uh, stuff like that. But this will at least get you functional. Uh, so this is kind of the stuff that you'd be using. Um, there may be a, a piece or two in here that you might not need because it's I'm setting up for one that I'm actually here for. So, But back around here, we have the speakers, uh, a bunch of the cords. You need an extension cord. You need a power strip, uh, at least one, in order to get this stuff outside. Uh, down below, it's the contr uh, sound control module, I guess. I don't know quite what term to give it. Uh, the speaker stands there. Uh, these two blue aqua boxes are usually under the fish tank in my office. Uh, I keep them kind of under lock and key because they're some of my better equipment and I don't like to have them out all the time. So, uh, mic stands, music stand. Um, I like to have two mics running and at least one music stand. Um, the third one that you see there is for the sake of recording because, like I said, I'm actually here this week. Um, but two I like uh, just for preference. It's just my thing. And then this speaker down here is actually, uh, that's going to get used as the monitor for whoever is using the mics and everything like that. That is usually by uh, Larry's keyboard in the sanctuary. So just unplug everything from it, pull, uh, unplug it from the wall and pull it out and then we'll use it and then just put it back. So uh, I will get things kind of started and uh, we'll move on. Okay, the music stand. It's really a piece of cake. Um, the legs need to get spread. It's this bottom knob here. Just lefty loosey. Open it up a little bit. Uh, you don't have to go all the way, but uh, tighten it back up. Tighten it up good, and then just make sure that it sits level. Um, you can raise these up. I'm going to be trying it this season to keep them down low just because it's easier to put the speakers on. Uh, otherwise, you've got to put the speaker on and have some, somebody hold the speaker while somebody else raises it up and puts the pin back in. Um, I don't think this is going to be a big enough venue to have to do that anymore. So. I'm going to try just leaving them down and see what happens. Um, if we find that we need to raise them up, you just this top knob, raise it up, take the pin out, put it in at your new height or whatnot, uh, tighten it, and like I said, the speaker should already be on there, so you need somebody to lift the speaker while you're raising up the stand. So. Uh, you do that with each speaker, and you're good on the physical setup. One thing to note about the speakers, uh, one of them, for whatever reason, this little cap thing does not stay in the speaker. Uh, the one that it doesn't stay in, you can actually see up into the speaker like that. Um, that speaker with that little, where you can see the, the uh, light colored stuff, goes on here. Uh, that's the only thing that determines which one has to go where. Um, like I said, don't know why it came off like that, why it won't go back on or stay back on, but point, in, uh, point for reference. Okay, so we've time lapsed, time lapsed a little bit. Uh, I am doing this actually inside because I'm not ready to set up outside for today's service, so uh, this would be out on the front steps, but uh, this is a basic speaker setup. Uh, as you can see, the speakers are down as low as they go. Uh, I'm gonna be trying that out this year, see how they work. Uh, I've got the controller box. I would like to have it plugged in and everything like that. But as far as the cords, I have a quarter inch cable. As you can see, it's plugged into the in on the speaker. And this is the same on the other speaker too. And they're both plugged into the A spots on the back of the uh, back of the sound module here. 
uh, in the past people have tried to put one in the A and one in the B. The B spot is basically if you have a third and a fourth speaker, uh, which is not our problem. So just put everything in the A spot and it'll work out perfectly. Uh, because this is, you know, one cord runs to one speaker, one runs to the other. Uh, and they both, when they're coming into the speaker, they go to the in, as you can see there. Okay, microphones. Uh, I have just the mic in the stand right now. Um, and these are the kind of cables you're looking for. There's both ends of it, so you can see. They only fit one way. Um, the female of the cable fits into the mic. Uh, voila, the mic is plugged in. And then the male end just goes into any one of these spots here uh, on the front of the mixer board. Um, I like to just put it in number one, just makes it easy. Um, one, two, three, you know, I normally can keep track of them by these uh, markings here. I have them on the ends of the cable, like you can see there. Um, if you have, when you are doing sound checks or whatever, um, this bottom knob here says main. If I can get in a little bit more. This is the knob that you want to use for controlling um, how much sound goes out of the speaker. And then for the monitor, it says monitor, duh, um, for how much of this port or this microphone is going to come out the monitor. Uh, so, you know, for what you can hear for yourself. Uh, and then you've got effects which I've never dealt with. The treble, the mid, the bass, if you want to change your tone quality. Um, unless you get a guitarist, I wouldn't worry about that. But Or if it sounds too tinny or something like that. But um, you can get by just kind of having that in the middle of the road. For whichever mic somebody is speaking into, I actually like to stick this guy on there, this windscreen. Just goes right over the top. Uh, just helps for wind and pops and all that stuff. So the sound quality is a little bit better. Um, that is usually in my stash of those aqua boxes. So that's one mic. You basically just repeat the process for however many mics you need, uh, all the way up to eight, because we have eight spots on that mixer board. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I've just put the monitor together. Uh, like I said, this is the amp that uh, Larry uses by the keyboard in the sanctuary. Um, I plugged one part of a quarter inch into that middle uh, instrument cable or instrument input. There's the power button, the red one. Uh, this is a pretty powerful speaker, so uh, that bottom knob there is the volume. Start out quiet and work your way up so you don't blow yourself out. Um, that cord comes around if you were to be able to follow all of the cabling. The back of the soundboard, uh, there's a spot there that says monitor. Just plug it into there. Um, and that will get you physically connected. Obviously plug in the monitor and flip it on. Well, since we're in the back, I think I'll show you this. Uh, if you've got a CD player, uh, this also does work for a laptop. Uh, you can see right in the back there is CD tape and a left and right. Uh, I just have a, some RCA cables plugged into that. And where's, where am I here? Yeah, there is the other end of the cable. Uh, I do have an extension in my aqua box um, and I'll plug this basically into the laptop or CD player, whichever one I'm using for audio. Um, and then I'm going to swing back around to the front, show you which knobs control what. Um, here we are in the front. Here, monitor volume will tell you how much the soundboard is basically going to put out to the monitor. You can also control monitor volume from the monitor speaker itself, uh, not a problem. Playback volume there in the middle um, is the volume for the CD or the volume for the laptop. Uh, that RCA thing that I just showed you. You can probably also control it from the CD player or the laptop, but this is where you can control it on the soundboard. Um, and then the main volume right there is your master volume out to the speakers. Um, this will take everything up and down. Um, if you want to control, like you want mic one to be up and mic two to be down, then you, know, you control it 
over here via the mains uh, for each individual channel. But for the whole level, uh, the main is what you want to deal with. Okay. Okay, here's a real basic layout of how I might do uh, a drive-in service setup. Uh, I've got two mics there, a mic uh, uh, music stand, the speakers, um, the monitors down there at the front, soundboard control thingy is off on the side somewhere. Uh, I might have a, the CD player or laptop right next to it. Uh, like I said, I'm doing this in the sanctuary or in the narthex, so I would really be doing this out on the front steps or on the uh, out in the pavilion if we're doing just a regular outdoor service. Uh, one thing to try and be careful of, uh, you know, you obviously got to watch your cords. Think about where people are going to be moving. Uh, so you don't have cords just all over the place. Uh, I try and keep that area Here uh, I know people are going to be standing in front of the mic stands So I want to keep that area clear. So I kind of just route the cables all sort of out of the way um, It's not just to be neat. It's kind of to be safe too because and you know, keep the cords protected um, We're a bit limited on the length of cord options that we have but you know, sometimes a shorter cord will do the trick. Go for it. Um, I have mainly 20 foot cables, 15 foot cables, and I think in a couple of 8 foot cables. Um, use your preference uh, depending on how you want to lay it out. Um, but this is just kind of how I tend to set things up. I like to be, if I'm controlling things, I like to have the soundboard unit kind of close so I can make adjustments as I need, um, especially if I got to you know, run music off a CD or a laptop, I got to keep it kind of close to that. So uh, I might move that over, you know, over to the front here, somewhere on a little table or something like that. But that just kind of gives you a basic idea of it. Um, maybe if I have the chance, uh, once I have this actually set up outside, I'll shoot some video so you can see exactly how I'm doing it. Uh, again, this is without um, my extra funky things are recording and actually setting up the laptop and all that because that's a few extra cords and stuff and if I'm not here um, you know if somebody helps me get this far that's awesome I will certainly take it and I can set up the stuff that is sort of brand specific so hope it's helpful and hope it uh, gets you through some good services when I'm not here thanks